Hi, I'm Mindy Stearns. Welcome to Grrr, It Happens. And to know him is to love him. He's a CEO, an entrepreneur, an outlier, an overcomer, father, brother, underdog. I'm talking about my husband. Please say hello to Glenn Stearns. And this is Grrr, It Happens, hey. season two. Season two. We're all about season two That's here. That's right. This That's is right. great. Here we are back in studio. We've back had a good year. It. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. I don't like the Zoom between Zoom? you and I. Now, you and I have done this a few times yes. where we're in other rooms and it just doesn't feel the same. No, you know? I like to be close to you so I can touch you yeah, and harass so you, you in person. you can kick me. Exactly. I'm in another room. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> So, hey, we, we've got some exciting guests here today to kick off season two. We started uh, this year at the end of the year with Grant Cardone of the new series Undercover Billionaire 2. And now we've got two badass bitches in the house. Can I just call you that without offense? Because it is a term of endearment. Elaine Kulati and, and Monique Mosley from Undercover Billionaire 2. Ladies, welcome. Hey, ladies. Thank you. There they are. Yes, yes. Well, Thank I you for having so much. <laughs> I have to tell you, I was so proud of both of you ladies yesterday. We watched it live, uh, the show. And for those that uh, maybe are new to what's going on, um, obviously Grit Happens is something Mindy and I have done for the last year. But it all kind of started with um, um, the Undercover Billionaire Season 1, where we, um, where I went out there and stuck my neck on the line and... and you know, and tried to see uh, if we could turn a hundred dollars into a million dollar business. Well, um, Discovery obviously thought of it enough that they said, well, "Let's go out there and find some other crazy people." And so uh, last night was the premiere of season two, and we've got two of the strongest women I've ever seen. Oh my gosh! That happened to take on the same challenge, and they're right here. So uh, Elaine and Monique just. Uh, it was so fun, fun. I guess, <laughs> is the word, to watch you both. Because I felt your pain. I felt that first struggle. Tell me, what was it like? How did you guys feel? How did you feel watching it? How did you feel actually finally? Because I mean, you know you shoot so many hours, and only just a few minutes, really, of all the hours you shoot make it to the screen. Were you happy? How did you feel about the, the final product last night? Oh, my goodness. It I still, I'm, my hands are still sweaty. You know? <laughs> Mine are too. Like, it, I, I decided very last minute if I could stomach watching it because um, it truly was the most difficult experience I had ever, you know, set myself <laughs> to think I could actually do. Um, but the city of Tacoma truly just showed up for me and for that reason alone i'm just so thankful for this experience oh my gosh i was so nervous oh my gosh elaine are I you feeling the same did you have sweaty palms <laughs> i think so. yes i had sweaty palms i was i was sweating all over um i jumped up and down out of my seat a couple of times and <laughs> And then my, my friend, um, you know, was singing, and, and the funniest thing I got was a picture of Russ's Lindsay boy chair in his room with his TV screen. And I can't hear you. Elaine, we're having, real, real weird. we're having some connectivity issues, Elaine. You're frozen, and we can't hear you very well. It's really kind of cut out. I don't know if, if you're in a different spot that maybe get some stronger signal, but you're on frozen. I'll be, I'll be dialing. For you, okay? Okay, you go read it out. We'll talk to Perfect. Monique until you come back. Come on back. All right. Okay. So, so you know, it's funny because, um, Monique, what I, what I noticed, I mean, the, the two of you couldn't be probably more opposite, right? And I felt the same way with Grant, you know, which is, and it's not good, it's not bad, right? It's just it different, is, right? right? And to, to watch how you approach things and how Elaine approaches things um, is, you know, I hope it shows people there's just not just one way to, you know, get, solve a problem. There's a lot of different ways to go at it. And, and I felt you when you were out there going, where am I going to sleep? You know, what am I going to do? And, and it was very smart. Hey, you know, a church and having people that are, you know, that care, um, it was, it, you know, again, I wish I had thought of something like that, actually. Well, I, listen, you thought of a lot of great things. And, you know, the benefit of going after the person who innovates for you 
is, you know, you, you don't know where you're going, but what I did know is that as a woman, I kind of wanted to be, you know, just take an extra step of resourcefulness so that uh, we can at least start teaching uh, women to use their voice and, and that, you know, being vulnerable or being in need does not have anything to do with your ability to be intellectual or to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, that asking for help is okay if you're being strategic and intentional about it. That's right. So, yeah. I, just and, take take and us back. Tell you, that was the best decision I made. Honestly, it set me up for everything else that was going to happen. All right. I have a question because I know a lot of people ask, have asked Glenn this, like, why did you do this? How did you find out about it? How, how did it come to How did it come across your plate? Did someone tell you about it? Did you watch and say, I want to do that? Or what was the impetus for doing the show in the first place? I'm so curious. The irony of all this is that Discovery is actually my favorite network. I don't watch a lot of TV. Uh, but that is the network that I do watch. And um, I, I saw I saw it. I watched it a couple times, actually. And then in January, I got a phone call. The, <laughs> I got a phone call from the production side of things. And they're like, listen, you should do this. And I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I didn't know the why. Like, why would I do something like this? Because, you know, outside of, uh, you know, cameras it's like you don't want to if people are honest you don't want to make mistakes in front of people right to be to be documented um and so i just didn't know the why and then COVID happened and i had a million reasons why we needed inspiration why women needed to you know put themselves on the forefront and kind of lead us by example and so honestly the pandemic became my reason why and I'm just so grateful that I actually was contacted because it was it was the best thing to do. Well, that's awesome. Now, you know, this show is called Grit Happens, right? And what, um, you know, it's about really is those that, you know, and the ideas and the, and the journey we go through and how it really takes a lot of times where we have to bite down and we have to bear through a lot of pain and we have to really, um, you know, kind of reinvent ourselves sometimes. Um, tell us a little bit, I know, but tell us a little bit about some of your background and how you, you get to a place like this because, you know, I don't think things happen by accident. And, you know, um, I, I'd love for some of the listeners to understand a little bit more about you. Oh, my goodness. You know, um, being raised by a single mother, you and I'm the oldest child, and growing up in, you know, income-based housing and watching her work so hard put herself back through school. Um, you definitely learn the idea of kind of having to be forced to make your own way. Um, and, you know, I was just curious enough and all the time to know that I wanted more. And we were also taught in our household that we weren't our circumstances. And so, you know, I was on my way with a full scholarship to college and then, oh, I get pregnant. So, you know, I'm a single mom at 18, I'm, I'm in all college. Set. Okay, bye. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Keep we got to lean back. Go ahead. Single mom. Finish your story and then we'll get you laying back in here. Yes. Yeah, single mom, you know, um, in college. And what I knew for a fact, the moment I realized I was bringing another life into this world is that I had to take all those principles that my mother taught me and apply them and do it unapologetically. And so, you know, most people were spending their time going to college parties. I was spending my time working, you know, going to school um, and preparing for my future. And I learned at a very young age in college to only do the things that I felt like could apply to my future. Yeah. So, I'm so I was very strategic and intentional, even, especially because the thing that everyone kept saying, and I know Glenn, you've probably heard this, is that I'm not going to be anything because I was a young mother. That's right. Hey, and, you I know, get it. part of my fight was about proving to people that I'm not a statistic. That's right. I, mean, I had, you know, remember I had a child at 14. I, yes, I, I know. I, I know you're. Uh, I've always you know, wondered. I think a lot of people wonder, they think, well, I don't have what he takes or I don't have what she takes and I don't have that. Do you think you're born with this, this drive or is this instilled? Does this come along or do you think, do you think it's something that is intrinsic within a person or do you think everybody really does have the resources to create their own success? I think, uh, I think we do all have the resources. It starts with our mindset mm -hmm. um, and the audacity to know that, you know, there's more for us out here if we choose it. 
Um, I think that, you know, we can't ever give up. And I think once you accept that, it's up to yourself. You know, you have to put yourself around the things that you want to be. That's and it. I always enjoyed never being the smartest person in the room. It was because they were high level rooms. So I didn't want to be. Um, and I always enjoyed being in the rooms that people knew I wasn't qualified to be in because that meant I was going to be the one who was learning the most. You know, so, um, you know, my businesses that I've had, most of them happen to have uh, other presidents besides me. And um, the president is uh, my last two presidents. See what he's saying. I got oh, Grant okay. Cardone texting us right now. He's trying to. <laughs> Grant's trying to. He's Grant. trying to come into our <laughs> podcast here, isn't he? No, but, he uh, wants you to another speaker conference. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway, so um, but uh, so like I said, so the 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 leader of my kind lending today is a woman, Yvonne Ketchum. Um, my last company, Stearns Lending, it was um was Catherine Lay, another woman. I have been very fortunate to realize that women are some badass. Don't say it because women. we are so much more no. than that. I was going <laughs> I was going over to Elaine. One hundred percent badass, I think is what you she said. You called in the yourself show. self proclaimed badass. That's right. <laughs> Welcome uh, back. Welcome back. Now tell me again as we, we just talked to Monique about you know I don't believe that uh, you got here by accident, right? Like t a little bit about your background and how um, you end up in a place like this, you know, and why? Because again, I don't. I think people need to understand things don't happen because you're given a silver spoon all the time. They happen because maybe you're given the wooden spoon, you know. And tell us a little bit about yourself, Elaine. Well, I saw the uh, backside of a wooden spoon plenty of times. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's right. Um, I think that, you know, I, there are no accidents, right? Um, you know, I think the universe is very purposeful. And um, I also feel that there's a reason that um, I'm in a spot to be able to motivate people to be self-starters. And um, I, I'm still working on what the takeaway value is of all of this because it's also new. Uh, and I'm you know, I'm a closet worker. I'm in in my in my workspace in my head every minute I'm awake and half of the time when I'm sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm once I get this all worked out, it's gonna be pretty interesting. But I will say that it has a lot to do with um, counting our our assets in a different way than dollars. And mm -hmm. I really I, I realize and always have that um, what's going on in here and, and in here, what's going on in your head and your heart are the things that really make you um, a, a far cry different than everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, compiling a bunch of money and stockpiling it and, and buying a bunch of things is, is not nearly as challenging as starting a, something from nothing mm -hmm. and, and doing it again and again and keep giving it back and creating a movement. That is... That's far more interesting, isn't it? So when, when you look at yourselves and you say, okay, you know, I came from nothing. Uh, I built myself up. I did a lot of it in a man's world. Um, you know, you're, a, you're an exception, both of you, to the rule. Why then are you going to want to go in front of the world and go, hey, let's see if it was all fake. Let's see if I'm going to look like a complete jerk to the world. Um, why would you go and throw yourself out there and um, risk all that. Either one of you. Monique, go. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me in the fire, Elaine. Throw me in the fire. <laughs> you know, I, I think simply put is that we cannot be what we don't see. And, you know, I, I, as shy as I am and as behind the scenes as I am, I thought, wow, you know, what is the worst that can happen is that at minimum, I'm going to learn something about myself and meet a new community. And the best thing that can happen is that people walk away with some type of inspiration, some type of, you know, learning tool. And what a great thing to teach people to become community. And for me, that was worth, uh, that was worth it versus me not doing it. Um, especially as the first black woman on the network, you know, that, that was worth it to me right. to do that sacrifice. Um, 
if we can educate because and that's what this network is about discovery is about educating and i think that it was worth it to me no matter what the results were but i have to tell you as you know and as elaine knows and as grant knows it Every day you had to find the reason why, you know, you had your initial why, and then every day was about, okay, why again? That's Wait, right. why again? <laughs> hey, that, like I said, I've always said it. It's, it's a naked and afraid business 2.0. That's what you I know? said. Yeah, you said yes. that too. It feels like it. You know, you're definitely yes. out there. I loved, um, Elaine, what you said when you were talking about your little, you got God right here on the top of your head and you feel that little kiss from, I'm just like, is that something you've always felt? Is that, is that something you have lived by your whole life? Very, very much. I am. I mean, whenever I get a little bit trepidatious, I just rely on that. You know, oh, it's, I love um, that. it's a, it's a, it's an, a part of confidence, you know, to know that there's always something that's guiding you. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not afraid to um, be unsure about what it is and to say that out loud. Um, you know, faith is different things to different people and mm -hmm. it always should be. I mean, that's, the whole like leap of faith that's what it means right. and how you know who are we to tell you how you should think right right but um it's my yeah it's my secret little weapon i yeah. love that i love that i'm like i know that feeling i know that feeling i just love that you put it in words yeah so eloquently we were um you know we were we watched the show last night again i didn't cheat i you know i could have gotten it from from the network um you know and i, I did have um I spoke with the, the head of the network yesterday, and she had called and told me that she was very proud of both shows, and that it. And again, she's a woman too. I mean, we've got a lot of powerful strong, women. powerful women in this. In the, you know, and and Discovery is, I think, uh, what about sixty five percent men, right? So that demographic is changing, and um, and so it's it's really neat to see that. And and again, I um, uh, you know, when I first did the show. I reached out to some friends and and they were on the show and they got cut out. One was Richard Branson and one was John My Elway. Favorite. I know. <laughs> and they cut them out if you could believe it or not. And uh but I said or maybe the producers asked, I don't remember, but um like like wouldn't this be fun to do? Wouldn't you love to do it? And they both were like, "Hell no. I would <laughs> never do it." And here are two guys that I thought were pretty um that you know risk takers yeah, risk people takers. are not not scared of adversity and they but i think they're comfortable now yeah, <laughs> they have get, no desire to go back exactly you get to a place where you, <laughs> where you, you say you know either you're you want to see what you're made of or you know i've already done that before and you know for me it felt like something that made me feel alive again right like i love digging out of a hole i find that um kind of i wouldn't say fun but i find it very uh, it just makes my all the wheels are spinning you know and and you know you'll get out of it and so um do you find yourself in a similar situation where adversity and and conflict i guess is probably the right word are things that you run to or you run away from oh i personally am a big fan of conflict and adversity <laughs> <laughs> I I'm, get it. I'm all in. Yeah, I am. I'm I'm all now, in. do you create it? Because I've been accused of creating it sometimes. I don't. I mean, no, I'm, no, no. I just, I just don't. I, I, it cannot be. It's not a deterrent. I mean, right. I, I don't. I'm not afraid of it. If somebody's, you know, being um, adverse with me, I, you know, I, I either go around them, over them, under them, through them. But I'm not. <laughs> and conflict is 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 designed to scare you off. It's right. that's what it is. I mean, and it's 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 just a false narrative. That's you know, interesting. Glenn we can't is all always get along okay, but we're gonna get we gotta get it done. So we gotta get through it. And you... writing about things, you know, which is really what you think of when you think of conflict, is like, you know, it's uh it's working it, through it. You have to find common ground. And um so I kind of I like the, the challenge. Right. Yeah, Glenn has now had kind of been that way. He's never been afraid to face Anything. I mean, I I probably say I'm a little more of a conflict avoider. I don't love it. I'm, but it gives you know mad props to Glenn because he'll just he he's never been afraid of it, and I admire the heck out of it. And that's probably a, a stream that goes between all of you in that success. That if you were afraid, you wouldn't make these choices. You wouldn't make these risks. You wouldn't get through a lot of the things that are blocking. But you know what? What I found, and again, I was very fortunate when I was a young young uh, kid that my mom. And my 
um, sister, my mom would say, hey, come on, kids, we're going in the car and we're going to get lost. And so we would just drive and drive and drive and go down these, you know, fields and farms and, and she'd pull over and she'd go, oh, no, you know, and we, we, we're lost, right? And then we would find our way home. And so I found that that conditioning as a young kid you know, taught me that it's okay to not know where you are, you know, and it's kind of can be even an adventure instead of the fear. And so whenever I found conflict, um, there's a lot of people that want to avoid it and you think, oh, I don't feel like talking about this. And then I would always be like, I want to talk about it right now just because I know I want to get it over with. You know, I, I, I know the other person probably feels the same, you know, Ang twist angst in their stomach, and, yeah. right? So let's just get it over with. And then you feel a lot better. So you might as well do it now instead of going home, thinking about it. You can't sleep at night and stuff like that, you know. I found that when, um, you know, both of you kind of found your 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 bed, your first bed last night, right? You're like, okay. And then it was like, oh, crap. Like, I only have three days here. Or I only have, like, you know, it was like, it's that first step. I panicked for you. I was Yeah, panicking. of going, I figured it out. Oh, no, I only figured it out for a short time, right? And so did that play through? And I, we don't know the rest of the outcome, but was there a constant state of panic? Panic, or <laughs> did it get better? Ooh, that's, Monique, a, that's you, yeah, baby. That's a good one, because at a certain point, production was like, we're concerned that you're not concerned. And I said, <laughs> I said, everyone deals with adversity and obstacles in a very different way. And I have always taken the approach of, of faith over fear. And I don't really focus on the problem. I'm more about the solution and that there's only one thing I can control in life. And that's actually me. Um, so, you know, I took the approach to the whole 90 day journey as more of a, okay, that's a problem. All right. Okay, it's not the end of the world though. Um, I still have life, and you know, I've always I'm a glasses half full type of girl. Yep. So that was the that was my approach. I'll tell you what though, I was so impressed that Elaine was like, "Oh, I got it somewhere to stay for 30 days." I was yeah. too. I was and like, Grant was like driving a brand new Jeep I know. <laughs> and in a brand new trailer that hadn't even been sold yet. I'm like, "Oh my God, I was thinking wrong." <laughs> well, so was Glenn. Oh, after I'm watching sleeping that. in my damn truck. <laughs> I'm going, what? I, you know, I think no, these and, three uh, have we learned just a mention, lot. Can we just mention that all three of your vehicles were far better than old oh, Betsy? Oh, amazing. Far love, better. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No. I know. You didn't I'm have the sad. fan belt. Old I'm, Betsy and the fan belt like, going down the street. so many bells ringing in the car, I couldn't have a phone call. <laughs> I'm, 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 I engine, love engine. my truck. You uh, know what the irony is about my truck is that in high school, uh, like everyone who was in college and like young execs, they were all driving uh, Jeep Cherokees. Yeah. And so in high school, I was like, yeah, I can't wait to make it so I can get a Grand Cherokee. And then look. There I, you go. I get, I get to Tacoma <laughs> and I got a Grand Cherokee. Careful. <laughs> Careful what you put out there. That's you just right. manifested. You manifested that. But you got it. It took you back. It went back. Your dream happened a little late. Just a little delay. Yeah, it just, yeah, that's yeah. all. It happened after the, you know, the other thing, <laughs> right? The G-Wagons and stuff. But hey, <laughs> never too late for a green goblin, I called it. That's right. You know what? I want to ask um, as a female, a, a woman to woman here, you know, you guys have both tapped into to some very male dominant industry dominated industries and had had incredible success what what would you say as a woman was probably your biggest obstacle to overcome in breaking through into that world to really prove yourself mm. I, well I've said this out loud many times and I'm and I don't mean to dismiss um, you know the the movement of giving making way for women but there is you know a moderate amount of um, credit that needs to be applied to being underestimated yeah because one of the most incredible things about being a woman is that there are plenty of people that are naysayers in the room that have no idea what you're about to do and they're not watching you and they're not competing with you when you're about to take their head from their shoulders so <laughs> I love that. exactly that that's personally. great that is so, great uh, you know n not that yeah. uh, hey i'm not a woman but um but I have been underestimated my whole life. I and I have watched it. I've seen the people come in, and you could watch them circling around. And and I and I 
you know, I used to take offense to it. It made me mad that people would, you know, uh, be waiting to pounce. And, and then I found that could be an asset because, you know, you say, okay, you know, I'm going to continue along. Everybody's doing all these things. And I knew they they had ulterior motives. And then you'd say, you know, and then when you came out and, uh, jumped on them, they were surprised, you know, and, and, uh, Anyway, it's just part of, I think, you know, again, we have a lot of people out there that are how to be an entrepreneur, what to do, right? And and a lot of it just has to do with having some really thick skin, right? You need to be able to handle that. You need to not take things as personal. You need to be able to realize that, you know, you're, you're going to be sacrificing. You're going to have pain. You're going to have a lot of different things. And it sometimes, you know, you also got to know that, it's just, uh, you know, a sacrifice you do to get ahead, whatever that means, right? And so I like that there's um, people here that are listening that will be able to get something from all of us, you know, in a different way. Because, again, some people are going to resonate um, with you, Monique, some with you, Elaine, and, and then others with myself or Grant or a hundred other people out there, you know, and or take something out of all of us, you know. I wanted to, before we move on, I wanted Monique to answer the question because I know Elaine jumped in on that and I and she had a really good answer. And then, Monique, what's been your experience? My experience is that, you know, it's 2021 and we're still fighting, you know, to, to show that no matter what our accomplishments are, <sighs> that not only do we deserve to be around, you know, I have a saying that, you know, just create your own tables. It's like, it's 2021, we still don't make a dollar on the dollar to our male counterparts, so... The, the way I look at it is that I, I go to the places where um, I can make impact. Um, I don't go to places where I'm selling myself. Those, like I never really took on that perspective. It's either like you're on board or you're not, because um, I'm gonna do this regardless. And that's kind of just the approach I have. And you know, you create the environment and that you create the community professionally and personally that actually support you. And then that takes a lot of the pressure of having to be a salesman. You know, I, I'm not selling myself to anyone. It's like, are you on or not? <laughs> I love it. Very strong answer. I do too. And you know, again, I, I've, um, I've been so delighted in, in just getting to know you both through this process and, but especially hearing a lot more than you knew I heard. Okay. Because I was in the <laughs> middle of doing my own show <laughs> And I would get people that you got to think this is a hundred people that are going between your set, not really set, but you know, and your set and mine and back and forth. And you'd hear, oh man, you know, that Elaine, she's a tough chick, man. Or, you know, or <laughs> Monique, oh my gosh, you know. And so it was really fun to be able to listen and, and hear. And that Grant, he's so much nicer than you. <laughs> Pussycat. Where is he? Exactly. <laughs> I know. He's, he was just, you had him on at the end of the year last year. We did a little thing right at, right before New Year's. Yeah, we had him on last week, I think it was, right? Was it? Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, and uh, so, every, again, everybody is different, but I got to hear so much about, and I was also a little bummed, uh, bummed was probably the wrong word, but I'm going, man, you know, like I was off trying to create something you know over here and and they didn't give me any help it feels like you know i i, I just i started feeling ripped off going man like why didn't i think of you know this and why didn't i think you want to go do it again huh? no i don't think so <laughs> but it was you know because i kind of threw it out there and thought you know, if they want to take me up on this, great. But then I didn't give it much thought after that, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm being whisked away and I'm like, now what am I going to do? Because I didn't have a plan. And so it was winging it really quickly, you know. And yep. so um, anyway, I, I really have enjoyed so far what has been, in, you know, in, in well, what is going to be in store for you guys. But what happened last night was um was amazing was fun how, how are your families how they respond to the first episode how, how what was the feedback oh my god they're really thrilled i mean everybody's <laughs> you know, they're kind of shocked that i actually did it <laughs> yeah. um i have a question can i have a qu ask you a question glenn it's important to me i was wondering um how how the, you feel about eerie, eerie rising because i i watched and i'm just like it's it's so amazing 
the the transformation of what you did and then how res everyone's so happy to see you and i just want to know you know i know you can't give everything away yeah no i just want you to tell me well you know you what i hope happens with both of you and grant as well is that the light that was shown on eerie um was a very good light you got to think about uh, you know, what people knew Erie for before was the pizza bomber. And yeah, I don't know if you right, remember that. Right, That's that right. guy that had that, that thing on his yeah, uh, neck. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and so there wasn't a whole lot of positive, of positive yeah, messages out there. And so when we came in there and then I started to dig in and I saw all these amazing, you know, entrepreneurs and a city that was working public and private partnership to come in and revitalize the place. A lot of pride in that town. There's a lot, a lot, of, pride. lot of pride in Erie. And so they were very pleased that we shined a very nice light on the city. And so coming back in, and I hope this happens to you, but I mean, I do get, you know, a lot of, um, you know, people that stop and, and say very nice things. And um, uh, it was really fun the other month I was with... Um, John Elway, you know, you know, we're very, very close. And, and um, this lady walks up, oh, Glenn, you know, I would love to get a picture. My son and I watched the show, can we, and uh, can my husband take it? And I said, of course. And, and then uh, I said, you know, I think you might want this guy in the picture because I was standing next to John. And she's like, I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know who, who he is. <laughs> and, and, uh, and her husband was and like. And her husband like, Mr. Elway, oh, do you we... mind getting in the picture? And. <laughs> So we took the as I walked away. I go, finally got you, motherfucker. <laughs> it's been 15 years, right? Like, because you know I'm the one standing on the sidelines with this guy, right? And um, that's funny. But but going back to Erie, I I mean I have to tell you, there's a lot of very grateful people that weren't on the show, just the city in general, and so they treat right. you very very well. They're very happy to see you, and so when I went back to do the Erie Rising, I mean the um comeback city um it was more about finding some businesses that needed it and so take um giselle last night she was so i mean she's champagne she was right geeked. yeah she was so happy it just bubbles. that is her that is her through and through all the time it was amazing yeah, yeah so it was really it, it felt really good and i hope you guys get that same thing I th I'm sure you will it's much more fun to go back when they know who you are and that goes to show you how important relationships are and what you're forming right now and you know that's emphasis I emphasize so much in both of the initial episodes between all three of you is that those relationships are crucial and that is what builds success people are the key and when he went back in he was just open arm and people were so excited already because now all of a sudden he's like a local celebrity you know so and, that and there's was fun. so many people that we'd go into underdog and um people would drive from arizona from texas, texas and from yeah. florida, florida and all just over. to go eat the barbecue right i mean they're very you know great fans and and so it was really awesome and what i love that both of you guys ladies are doing is You've you've been back and you're trying to make sure that what you started really Maintained. is successful, mm -hmm. right? And and what people don't know is the TV camera might have flipped off, but you still have an obligation, right? It's it's your word, it you know. I mean, it's your word, it's, your reputation. Oh, it's, uh, it's my business. I can't leave them alone. I call them right. all the time, and forget about I miss them. <laughs> oh, see, yeah, they, nice. you know, you literally become family. Mm -hmm. Um, last night the mayor of Tacoma hosted. After we did the East Coast premiere, I then finished that and then went into a Tacoma Zoom with that was hosted by the mayor. Uh, and I watched it live with them on the West Coast time. And then I did a Q&A after and um, uh, I'll be with them in a couple of days and I'll be there, you know, each month for a week. Um, this is my family now, you know, this is we're building together. And more importantly, they're they're happy. They're inspired like. They're like, wait, you know, our city's amazing. And it is. They're an amazing group of people. And I feel like all four of us feel like that. That's the beautiful thing about this. You know, even though we're just four people who have had this experience, it gets to go out to hundreds of millions of people. Yep. And even though they won't have cameras with them, they can apply these things to their communities. And it's amazing what happens when you build as a community. You've got financially, great. Even financially, what it does for your community. 
This this has been the best show to focus and highlight on these towns. Some of them feel so forgotten, but you're bringing about American pride in these these towns and cities, and it's such a. I mean, there is the potential to this can go on forever because there's so much of America. We need so much to bring things together, and I think this show brings people together in a way that we need so badly right now. And I'm honored that you guys have been part of such a great movement. It's exciting to see, and I know we can't give away anything else that happens beyond this. And if people want to watch, they got to tune in to see Undercover Billionaire season two on Discovery and Discovery Plus, and then. Uh, I'm excited to see how it goes. We're really excited to see how the, the journey continues for you guys. That's right. Very excited. How often are you doing these? I want to do them. Are they, you doing them a lot? What's these, that? These, the podcast? How often are you doing the podcast? We you do know one what? every week. We do it every week. We record okay. some. Some are live. We've been doing, uh, we started this last year, I think, uh, pre-COVID, actually. And then oh, I've just I really enjoyed it. Oh, I want to come on again. You know what I did? We will. We'll do it towards the end of the season or in the middle sometime. We'd love I, to talk to you I, guys I, again. But I'll tell you, ladies, and I, and I think you're probably better at this than I was, but when the show hit, I was not prepared with any social media. Again, I mean, not a television guy. You know, we're just a business. We're all business people, right? And and so I wasn't that prepared. And, and then with a lot of people that really want entrepreneurial advice, you know, it, it felt right. So we started this uh, podcast you know, about a year ago, and um, we just have been having a blast. It yeah, because just... we didn't think to put a commercial in the middle of the show like somebody else did. <laughs> Actually, I did. <laughs> I did think of that, Mindy. But we didn't have a we didn't have a product to we sell. Didn't, we, we didn't don't have, have a commercial product. We didn't have product. a book or a product yeah. to say. So uh, while we're speaking of yeah. what are your social media handles, so people can find you guys and follow you and see what else you guys are doing and follow your journey. Mo Monique, go ahead. What's your? Is there a place we yeah. can find you? And then my Twitter is Monique underscore Mosley, and then my Instagram is Monique Idlet. I D L E T T. Oh, it is Monique Idlet. Okay, Instagram. And then uh, Elaine. Oh, I'm just Lipstick Farmer. You can find me on Lipstick Farmer. I love that. Lipstick Farmer. I love farmer. that name, Elaine. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. We're, we're there farming away every day, making food. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Food, 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 food. Lipstick on Hunty. Yeah. Elaine yeah. Claudia at Gmail. But the, best place, the best place is really, honestly, to just go to Lipstick Farmer because You've got Jan and Carly and the team and they answer and they get on, you know, they, they respond. And I think it's really hard when people think that you're not responding because, you know, you, you're not when you're really just you, you literally there's just so much to sort through. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, forget about the fact I have to run a business and a family <laughs> and a farm. <laughs> <laughs> you're not busy. You're not Amen. busy at all. Well, we really appreciate you guys. What's that? <laughs> Say that again. I go, I don't know for how long. I don't know. Right. Exactly. Well, listen, we really appreciate it. It was wonderful to be surrounded by three very strong women today. I yeah. uh, feel you go. You go. That's right. <laughs> we got this. Women power. That's right. And um, and I'm proud of your show. Um, I'm really excited for mine as well. I think it works well together as we go right behind you guys. So um, it's going to be fun to watch these next uh, couple months of, of shows. We'll so. get you guys back in towards the end. Maybe we can have all three of you on and we can do a fun recap when this gets That's right. to the end. And That's we can we all do. compare notes. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. And, Absolutely. And, you know, to both of you, just thank you. You know, um, someone had to think of this. Someone had to start this journey. And it is, it's going to make so much impact and it's going to continue to, especially with, you know, like the second show that you're doing. And what I do know is that in order for Glenn to have done something like this, you absolutely had to be okay and be supportive. So thank you for, because I know that's a lot too. There's a lot of sacrifice that goes into things like this. So thank oh, you. Yeah. We She's had, right. You're we, absolutely we right. We starfish that bed for 90 days. <laughs> 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 and I sat in that car freezing poor guy. my I was tail like, oh, up. and my nice silk sheets and my right. warm comforter. And poor thing. Yeah, I felt, right. thought about you every day, honey. We oh, missed you a sure lot. You did. Well, thank you guys. You can catch you can thank catch you. Grit Happens. Of course, check Grit Happens out on all the um outlets where you can what listen to podcasts. We've got Grit Happens on Facebook and Instagram. There's also uh, the website, glennsterns.com. Follow him on Glenn Stearns. Oh, so did I say this? I don't think I did, but I'm doing some mentoring that, uh, again, we, and, and, I, and ladies, I'm sure you're going to be asked a lot of this too, but 
Um, and so I'm doing some group mentoring. People that are asking questions can get to go on to some Zoom calls as well as some one-on-one -on -one mentoring out there for free. You know, I just want to help where I can. And so anyone that can go on to the dot com mm -hmm. and subscribe, um, hopefully we'll we'll catch up and we'll we'll be able to put some stuff. You guys together. are going to change the world. Well, I got some free mentorship in me, so add, I'll, I'll support whenever you need a, a lady's perspective. Perfect. Line. Good. <laughs> That's awesome. That if you farmer. There yes. You go. <laughs> yes. One hundred percent. I need a far I need some farming support down here. I bought a farm <laughs> in the middle Skyler of the Skyler about the I know That's you right. did. I'm gonna help you, girl. I'll come down there. Thank you. Oh, yeah. we love, love, you. Baby. Well, love you, ladies. Guys, thank you so much for joining us thank today. We appreciate. We'll be watching all season under Undercover Billionaire season two on Discovery, Discovery Plus for Undercover Billionaires Comeback City. Lots of good, inspiring right. TV to be caught on Discovery. Thank you, Discovery, for making this such a fun process for all of us. Thank you for joining us today, you guys. Happy New Year, and we'll catch up with you guys later catch in the season. On the other side, you have been listening to another another episode of Grit Happens. We'll see you next we'll time. See ya. Thanks, guys. Woo Take care. Bye-bye. All right. I love it. Hi, I'm Mindy Stearns. Welcome to Grit Happens. And to know him is to love him. He's a CEO, an entrepreneur, an outlier, an overcomer, father, brother, underdog. I'm talking about my husband. Please say hello to Glenn Stearns. And this is Grit Happens, happens. Hey. Season 2. Season We're two. all about Season 2 That's here. That's right. This That's is right. great. Here we are back in studio. We've back had a good year. It. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. I don't like the Zoom between Zoom? you and I. Now, you and I have done this a few times yes. where we're in other rooms and it just doesn't feel the same. No, you know? I like to be close to you so I can touch you yeah, and harass so you, you in person. you can kick me. Exactly. I'd be in another room. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> So, hey, we, we've got some exciting guests here today to kick off season two. We started uh, this year at the end of the year with Grant Cardone of the new series Undercover Billionaire 2. And now we've got two badass bitches in the house. Can I just call you that without offense? Because it is a term of endearment. Elaine Kulati and, and Monique Mosley from Undercover Billionaire 2. Ladies, welcome. Hey, ladies. Yeah. Thank you. There they are. Yes, yes. Well, Thank I you for having me. So much. <laughs> I have to tell you, I was so proud of both of you ladies yesterday. We watched it live, uh, the show. And for those that uh, maybe are new to what's going on, um, obviously, Grit Happens is something Mindy and I have done for the last year. But it all kind of started with um, um, the Undercover Billionaire Season 1, where we, um, where I went out there and stuck my neck on the line and... and you know, and tried to see uh, if we could turn a hundred dollars into a million dollar business. Well, um, Discovery obviously thought of it enough that they said, well, "Let's go out there and find some other crazy people." And so uh, last night was the premiere of season two, and we've got two of the strongest women I've ever seen. Oh my gosh! That happened to take on the same challenge, and they're right here. So uh, Elaine and Monique just. Uh, it was so fun, fun. I guess, is the word, <laughs> to watch you both because I felt your pain. I felt that first struggle. Tell me what was it like? How did you guys feel? How did you feel watching it? How did you feel actually fun? I mean, because you know you shoot so many hours and only just a few minutes, really, of all the hours you shoot make it to the screen. Were you happy? How did you feel about the, the final product last night? Oh, my goodness. It I still, I'm, my hands are still sweaty. You know? <laughs> Mine are too. Like, it, I, I decided very last minute if I could stomach watching it because um, it truly was the most difficult experience I had ever, you know, set myself <laughs> to think I could actually do. Um, but the city of Tacoma truly just showed up for me. And for that reason alone, I'm just so thankful for this experience. Oh my gosh. I was so nervous. Oh my gosh. Elaine, are I you feeling the same? Did you have sweaty balls? <laughs> 
I think so. Yes, I had sweaty palms. I, have, I was sweating all over. Um, I jumped up and down out of my seat a couple of times. And, and then my, my friend, um, you know, was singing, and, and the 